Hello folks and welcome. In this webinar, we're going to learn how to create our first voice broadcast campaign. More specifically, we're going to learn how to create an account with Callfire, then going to learn how to record our messages over the phone or the various ways that we can record messages with Callfire. Next, we'll learn how to upload our list of numbers that we'd like to send those messages to. And then lastly, we'll learn how to understand the reporting and the analytics that Callfire provides based on the progress of that campaign. So let's go ahead and get started with creating our account. We'll start by pressing the sign up for free button right here. And when we create an account with Callfire, notice that there are a variety of billing plans we can select from. The way the billing plans work is that you essentially subscribe to a billing plan for a period of 30 days. For example, if I went with the light billing plan, I'd be paying $99 per month and I'd have 2,500 minutes that I could use for either phone calls or text messages or the combination of the two. And the idea is that from the date of sign up for that light billing plan, I'd have 30 day days to then exhaust all 2,500 minutes. If I go over that amount, I can either, and when I say the amount, I'm referring to the number of minutes allocated in that basket in the billing plan, I can either upgrade to the next billing plan up and then just pay the difference in price, and then I'll get the remaining difference in minutes that I've, uh, between the minutes allocated here and how much I have have got, used up here or how much I've gone over minus the difference between what it's here and what I've gone over. And of course, we do have some higher volume billing plans as well, especially useful for those of you who plan on doing uh, lots of calls with us on either a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. And again, you're not required to go with the billing plan. You can always go with our basic pay-as-you-go plan, where you're paying uh, five cents per minute for a phone call, where it says $3 for a phone number. Uh, that's not where we're going to be charging you $3 for each number in your list. That actually refers to a different service of ours, called known as the, uh, as the call tracking product. So just wanna clear that up real quick. And again, the nice advantage of the billing plan is that they allow you to more or less kind of set it and forget it, meaning you can essentially select a billing plan and call if I were automatically renew that billing plan, you know, every 30 days. But again, if you don't want a billing plan, totally understood, you just go with the basic plan. So we'll press try it for free. And go ahead and fill out these forms over here. I'm gonna go ahead and log into one of my accounts real quick. And here we are. So I'll start by pressing the orange create button. And I can see all the different kinds of campaigns that we can create. We notice they're separated by outbound and inbound. Our focus today is on the voice broadcast product. So I'll select the voice broadcast product under the outbound campaign row. And the first thing that I need to do in creating a voice broadcast campaign is select the sound files that I want Callfire to play uh, to the recipients of my message, or rather for the recipients of my message. Now, uh, one thing I should let everybody know regarding the voice broadcast product uh, has to do with some legal issues that you all should be aware of. I'll preface my statement by saying that uh, I'm not a lawyer, so anything I say can't be counted as legal advice nor uh, consent. However, you all should know the following, or rather keep in mind that you all should know the following. Beginning September 1st of, uh, or rather starting on September 1st of 2009, the FTC put a law in place saying that anytime a business wants to send a pre-recorded message to a consumer, that business must have some form of explicit written opt-in consent from that consumer prior to the broadcast of that message. Again, anytime that a business wants to send a pre-recorded message to a consumer, that business must have fo some form of explicit written opt-in consent prior to delivery of that pre-recorded message. Now, there are some exceptions to that law. If you're a business sending other businesses a pre-recorded message, that's fine. You don't need that opt-in consent. If you're a political group, a religious group, or a not-for-profit, you also don't need to worry about that either. Now, one note, especially if you're a political group, or a religious group, or a not-for-profit, you do need to make sure that you're not going to be calling cell phones. If you do plan on calling someone's cell phone, you do have to make sure in that case that you do have opt-in consent. So let's say for the purpose of this uh, tutorial that I am an insurance agency and I would like to remind all of my policyholders who've already given me consent to call them, uh, that, they, that for those who fall into this category, I'd like to call the ones who are delinquent on making a payment on their policy. And if they don't make a payment, then we'll have to cancel it and then that's lost revenue for me. So I'd like to send out a message reminding folks they need to make a payment on their policy, otherwise they'll have to, well, I'll have to cancel them. 
So first I'll go ahead and enable the transfer option. I can do that by pressing on the word disabled. Now it's enabled. And do not call an answering machine already enabled, it's perfect. Now I'll go ahead and press select a message so I can record a message that Callfire will play if a live person picks up the phone. So I'll press select a message, and then I'll press create a new message. Three ways to play here. I can either upload an audio file. Should you choose to record an audio file of your own, make sure that you record that file in the following format, and that format is 16-bit, 8 kilohertz mono. Again, that audio format needs to be 16-bit, 8 kilohertz mono. That audio file cannot be any bigger than 3.5 megabytes. I can also record that message over the phone. If I do that option, I can, or to click on that option rather, I can type in my phone number, and here at Callfire, we use the Hollywood principle. In other words, don't call us we'll call you. So you'll type in your, uh, your number in that box and Callfire will send an inbound call to that phone line of yours and then you'll be able to record that message over the phone. The last option, let's get back to that real quick, that we can use is text to speech where you type out the text that you'd like Callfire to read off and then you can select one of four different voices. We have three in English and one in Spanish that Callfire can uh, use to then read off that message. So in my live answer message, I want to tell folks that, hey, you're delinquent, making a payment, you know, take care of this immediately. And I'm going to tell them to press one to be transferred or press eight to opt out. Again, it is imperative that you tell your customers at the end of your live answer message, that they can press one to be transferred or press eight to opt out if you actually want them to do those things. If you don't want them to be transferred back to you, if you don't want them to opt out, though if you are sending calls as a business to a consumer, you definitely want to give them the option to opt out, unless of course you're exempt from the do not call laws because you're a political group or a religious group or not for profit. So I'll go ahead and just copy and paste some text over, over here. I'll use Beth's voice, I'll press accept, and don't worry, we'll send a test call so we can hear this message sounds. Yay, we know the message was appended successfully because it, we can see the message right over there. Next thing we'll do is configure the transfer message. This is an acknowledgement message just as these uh, little paragraph uh, tells us over here. So this message would sound something like, hey, thanks for pressing one, you'll be transferred shortly. Notice they've already specified the transfer digit so that way Callfire knows what digit to look for, uh, meaning what digit someone needs, someone needs to press on the keypad before playing that message. So I'll press select a message. I think I already have a message like this over here. Thanks for pressing one, great. Transfer number, this is the phone number that Callfire will transfer calls to. I'll just make this, use that number over there. And max transfers refers to the total number of transferred calls that Callfire will accept before pausing the campaign. So let's say, for example, that I only have two people at my insurance agency who can take those incoming calls. By setting max transfers to two, as soon as two people not consecutively press the one button requesting to be transferred, Callfire will pause the campaign and only resume the broadcast once one of those lines is free. Excellent, so I'll go now go ahead and select a message for answering machines. Now when recording my message for answering machines, I do not need to tell people to press one at the end of my message, nor do I need to tell them to press eight. The reason being is because when someone's listening to that message on their answering machine, there's no longer an active phone line in the background waiting for them to actually respond by pressing one of those keys. If they tried doing that, well, the call would go nowhere because they're simply just listening to a recording. So when I record this message or when I Yes, when I record this message, what I'll tell folks is probably just to call me back at a certain number. So I think I'll select that message over here. I think that is my answering machine message. Now when I'm recording my do not call message, again, notice that I've specified the digit that I want Callfire to look for before playing this message. This message can sound something like, hey, thanks for pressing eight. You've now been added to my do not call list. Press select a message, and I think I already have my message like that there. Excellent. Now I'll send a test call to this number or test call rather to a phone number of mine so I can go ahead and make sure I like, like the way this sounds. I'm gonna go ahead and verify a new number real quick. So Callfire is gonna call that number over there. And a security code will be played for me over the phone. So I'll wait for that call. Hello? Location number is two nine five two. If we reached you in error, Okay, I'll type that code in, I'll press verify. Excellent, my number's verified, so now I can send a test call. I can make sure that the message sounds okay. Hi, this is the Valentine Agency with a reminder that you're delinquent on making a payment on your policy. Failure to do so will result in immediate cancellation. Press 1 to take care of this now, or press 8 to opt out. So we'll press 1. Thanks for pressing 1. 
You'll be transferred shortly. Excellent. Thank you for calling Call Buyer's Messaging Service. Your call is very important to us. Excellent. So that call transferred over. That's what I wanted. So we are all set there. I'll go ahead and press the next button. Now that we recorded our message, the next, things, the next thing that we need to do is to tell Callfire who we want to send these messages to. So five ways to play here. I can upload a spreadsheet from my computer. I can choose from a list that I already added to Callfire, and I would have done that via the Contacts button. I can add a one-off contact or several contacts to this campaign manually. If I wanted to generate a list of calls for this campaign that maybe were part of a campaign I ran in the past, I could do that using the filter tool, so that essentially allows me to cherry pick out certain records from other campaigns, or it can copy and paste from a text source. I'll go ahead and just upload a spreadsheet. That seems pretty easy. I'll select that one. I'll press open. Now Callfire will go through the phone number validation process. So I'll select to manually name the columns. Okay, all this looks fine. Now one thing of note is with the way that our system works right now, uh, Callfire will only call the phone numbers uh, under the column that has the designation of home phone. Now, even if that number that you're uploading or the numbers you're uploading are, say, not home phone numbers in reality, let's say they're all mobile numbers, that's fine. Just make sure the home phone designation appears over that column. The, these designations of home phone and work phone can only appear under one column. So if you want to, for example, call someone both their mobile phone number and their home phone number, make sure that both those persons, uh, uh, that individual's numbers appear under one column in your spreadsheet. So this looks fine. I'll press continue. We'll wait for Callfire to finish validating our numbers. And then we will be, as they say, in business. Okay, looks like there's some issues that we're gonna have to resolve. That's fine. They're probably minor. Okay, I'll go ahead and merge the contacts right now because it looks like Callfire found that the contacts that I'm uploading in the spreadsheet happen to appear in my account based on previous campaigns, so that's fine. Agree the terms of service, and I'll press continue. Great. Okay, so what I know now is that there were a total of three numbers uploaded successfully, and there are three numbers that are eligible to receive a phone call. I know this because under description it says three remaining. I'll press next. The final step is to just customizing my campaign settings a bit. So first thing I can do is give my campaign a name. Always a good idea. Next thing I can do is customize the caller ID. This is the phone number that my policyholders will see on their phones when they take my call. So I'll just go ahead and use that number. Again, if you want to use a, a call, another caller ID of your own, that's fine. You'll press the new button and then Callfire will verify it the same way that it verified uh, one of my numbers when I want to send a test call to it. In other words, it will call that number of yours. You'll hear a security code over the phone, type in that security code and you'll be set. Remember, you only have to do that once and then it's verified forever. Another cool thing that Callfire can do is allow me to put in some local time dialing restrictions. Think of this as a way of declaring the bounds for when it's appropriate to send out phone calls. So with this checked off from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., this means that Callfire will only let me broadcast out messages in this campaign between the hours of 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. local to where my recipients live. So let's say, for example, that, you know, the, my insurance company was a big Fortune 500 organization where I have policyholders who live all over the United States. Obviously, I don't want folks who live on the West Coast to get a call before 8 a.m. Likewise, I don't want folks on the East Coast to get a call after 9 p.m. So with this feature active, this will send, this essentially prevents me from you know sending out calls during awkward times of the day. Notice, or you should be made aware of, that the local time dialing restriction feature is not a scheduling tool. In other words, this is not a tool where you will tell Callfire when you want a campaign to start. I can do that by setting a schedule, which we'll get to in a second. Max simultaneous calls, moving on, refers to the total number of calls per minute Callfire will attempt to broadcast out. 100 means 100 calls a minute. Uh, if you need more channels than that, that's fine. You should know that we have over thousands upon thousands of channels, so if you have an emergency broadcast or a large campaign of sorts, that's fine. Just talk to a sales representative or a customer uh, success manager on the Callfire uh, team, and he or she will be happy to work with you to get more channels. So remember, I only have two folks at my office who can take this incoming call, so I'll set max simultaneous calls to something more pedestrian, say 10 calls a minute. With automatic retries, Callfire can automatically redial a number based on the status of the uh, call or the result of the call. If I select busy and no answer, that means that Callfire will only call back the busy and the no answered calls after that first pass. 
times refers to the number of times that call fire will attempt to redial a number, and minutes between uh, tries means how many minutes call fire will wait before reattempting those numbers. So the way this is set up in layman's terms, this means that call fire will dial the numbers once, wait an hour, and then only redial the numbers from that first pass that came back with status of no answer or busy. With the scheduling tool, I can have call fire uh, automatically start this campaign for me at a later date and time. By pressing set schedule, I can select the date and time. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the schedule. I'll press the green finalize button. Okay, now that my campaign is ready, I'll go ahead and start it. I'll hover my mouse over the word stopped and then click on start and away those calls go. Go to the call records tab, I can see the all the contacts that have been uploaded to this campaign. Go to visualize, I can see a neat little heat map of where all my calls are going to. Go to the contacts tab, I can upload more contacts on the fly if I want to. Go to the settings tab, I can change my campaign settings on the fly. Go to the sounds tab, I can also swap out my sound files on the fly as well. So back to the call records tab and see if any of those call statuses have come in. Not quite, that's fine. Let's refresh our screen a little bit. Okay, excellent. Looks like two of those calls have come back the status of answering machine. You can always export the call records as well, and they'll be exported as a CSV file and Excel file. So in terms of getting further help or assistance, you can always click on the Help tab in the upper right-hand corner of the screen where we have written tutorials with screenshots for those of you who are more visually inclined. You can also always uh, email us at support at callfire.com or call us at 877-897-3473. On Mondays, or rather through Monday, Monday through Friday, from 11 a.m. Eastern to 7 p.m. Eastern, we have live chat support as well. We hope that by watching this video, we have uh, lit the path to success. Again, many thanks for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.